In this stage we are going to section and ditch the model that has been produced prior to preparation of the coping. So this is the model here and by using a plaster knife, because I don't think your fingers will be enough, you need to gently remove the lugs from the side of the tray to enable us to be able to remove the die stone model from the tray. So here it is very gently being removed. I should point out it is possible to break the little connecting strip between the um, these lug things, but it's not not important. Making it look easy there. <laughs> okay, once those are removed, you hold the uh, plaster model and tap the tray gently. Tap the tray, and it should just drop off like so. And there's your model. So the next stage to do is to remove. The next stage is to remove all the um, excess die stone, and to do that, we're going to um, use a plaster burr. So I'm just marking it to show you which bits we're going to take out. So it's the centre pallet back to the, the trough of the tray. Big aggressive plaster burr. This is mm -hmm. a four by four of burrs. This go anywhere, cut anything. Be careful with it because it goes through your fingers. Now we've so. speeded this up. Um, because it's a little tedious to watch otherwise and uh, would make for a rather nice 30 minute podcast. When you're doing this, don't, don't try and rush to get these things done because if you make a mistake at this point it's incredibly frustrating when you have to go back and, and produce a new model. Also be careful when you're holding this model, you'll see it's a horseshoe shape. If you hold it across the molars, which you'll see me do shortly, um, so, it doesn't say not as I do. Um, it's very easy to just break this model in half. It is very weak uh, at the front, isn't it? And one of the restorations that we're going to produce is at the front of this model. If you break it through there, we've had it. So, final bits of tidying up then where there was excess material. Always working through to the dust ex extraction. This is vanilla flavoured dye stone, but you still don't want to be breathing it in. Just blowing off the bits of excess here. Out of all the grooves which relocate back into the tray. And I'm going to do the same for the tray as well. And then hopefully it should sit back in neatly. You'll see the horizontal groove there as well where the lugs locate to lock the model into the tray. Cleaning your tray as well. Because you've probably sprayed plaster dust everywhere. And there she goes. Clonk straight back in and it should seat down fully without any problems if it doesn't go get on the steam cleaner and get rid of any other bits and pieces so your pencil out and this is not just for the benefit of um, you watching now this you would do this each time really just to know where you're going to be cutting and give yourself a line and you're aiming for parallel lines um, near enough because you don't want to build any undercut in because the piece that we're going to relieve in the center is going to be removed upwards so if you're making a sort of a keystone shape, um, you're probably okay, but if you do an inverted one where it's thicker at the bottom, you're going to end up with an undercut and it's start again time. The important thing here then is to avoid the margins at all cost. Mm. If necessary, you take a small piece out of the adjacent tooth down at the gingival margin, but it's, it shouldn't be in this case. Um, so you need to get your saw blade in between the preparation margin and the adjacent tooth carefully. Start off slowly and then you can gradually build up as you go. Mm -hmm. Now there's going to be three of these um, dies to section out, so that's six cuts in all. So that's going to be um, quite demanding on your mm -hmm. little fingers. So start off with one and then you can pass a saw on, give it to somebody else to do while you have a ditch of one of the dies and then swap over again. Ooh. There went the die. <coughs> Try to watch that not one. to drop yeah. that. Um, there is a benefit to doing it on a soft surface. It just cushions your model and reduces the chance that it will fracture rather catastrophically when you're only halfway down. So it's very unlikely that it will go back in first time. You can see, and you can see here that when the um, the cut goes, usually the last bit of the cut is a little fractured area yeah. and tends to stick out. So you just need to remove that. There we go. Also, at this stage, if you had made it slightly um, undercut, you'd, you'd reduce it down again with the plaster burr. These are just the little fractured bits that I'm doing here, and 
unfortunately, as we'll see, it just once I remove those, it just drops straight back in. And there's no cheating there at all. No. That's the finished product, at least for that um, tooth there. So you would have to do another two after that point. And this is the ditching process. So the object of this then is to remove all the soft tissues uh, from around the preparation so that we can see the margin clearly. We need to get access to the margin to um, cut, um, wax away from around the margin if we're producing a, a wax crown, a, a wax up for a gold crown or a wax up for a metal substructure. With the CAD cam route, the machine needs to be able to see clearly the margin and the best way to do that is to undercut it so it, it, it can see uh, the margin and define it well on the scan. Yeah, and it's, it's very difficult once you've got the scan on the screen to be able to spot between the margin and the associated tissue sometimes. So you need to make it very obvious. You can see this is like a giant rose head that we're using here um, to do this. You, we've got some big tungsten um, bursts, the flame shaped ones that, that are, are available as well. And with those you just work um, from, um, from the bottom upwards, if you like, towards the uh, margin, and you try to hit the little pocket around the side of the margin. Again, it gets a bit tedious, so we've just speeded it up. It's worth mentioning when you're doing this is to make sure that your chair is chucked in and nobody is going to walk behind you and sort of bump you as you're doing this because, again, if you if you ruin this, it's start again time. Yeah. Notice how I'm holding the um, micromotor as well. I've got it health firmly, not like holding a pen, and I've also got my thumb on top of my other thumb so that I'm keeping everything nice and stable. So I'm really using my thumb to just pull the motor towards me. You should feel resistance as you pull the motor, it shouldn't dance across the plasterwork towards you. If it does, you've probably got the motor running in reverse, so you want to check that. There we go. It's all about baby steps really and being confident where you're putting the burr. Um, when you're getting very close to the margin, margin, you can use a scalpel just to do the final few steps. And there's the finished product. Job done. Now we're just going to move on to die hardener and spacer because when doing the lost wax process for the gold crown, um, the, you need to make your model a bit more wear resistant because if you're going to be putting on and off a cast uh, metal uh, piece, um, it's a worry that you'll uh, erode the model, and in particular the margins of the model, yeah. where you're very interested. And likewise, if you're carving around with a Lacrom carver when you're doing your wax up, you're likely to um, just abrade those margins a little. So this just increases the abrasion resistance of the material. It's just a little resin hardener that seeps into the pores of the die stone. You don't so want too much on it, you don't want it puddling, so we just put it on, give it a quick blast with the air just to make sure it's not puddled around the margin. Uh, and then let it dry. Yeah. You can also put it onto the adjacent contact uh, points of the teeth. Yeah. Um, just to... This is now the die spacer and this is going to leave room underneath the restoration for your looting cement and we apply two layers of this each at 20 microns thick and that gives a total of 40 microns space for your um, looting cement. You can see that what I do, I put the little brush onto the die push down towards the margin, stopping a millimetre short and then in one nice stroke pulling back up to the uh, occlusal surface and again on the occlusal surface one stroke, don't try and put die spacer on and then adjust it, you can't do that, girls will know this because this is exactly the same as nail varnish. It goes all rough and bobbly and disgusting to be honest. Yeah. Just one coat and let it dry, don't try and adjust you it. You can see how far to the margin it's gone there, it's about mill or so off isn't it? It's repeated yeah. again for the go. five where you're going to do a substructure. Job done. Excellent.